Oh, wow. This is quite a long one. I think it's going to be about oh, nearly 30 minutes. So I got into it. I really did get into it. And it's all about how emotions create other emotions. And I share some real personal stuff again. And a lot of real how-tos to really make a difference in life. But understand, understand what you're doing is trying to do something good for you, even if it's crappy. It's really trying to do something good for you. Fine what it's trying to do and then change because you can okay that's the short bit have a listen to the next bit if you're new to this anyway and if you're not skip forward about a minute and a half and we'll get right with it Ta-da. hey my name's paul clough and i'm part of this thing i've called unplugged personal development it's a niche of one the personal development unplugged podcast you see in this genre of personal development self-improvement of becoming a better you. I believe things have been made way, 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 way too complicated. And I wondered why. And I don't think it's to make people like you or me feel better, feel good. I think maybe it's for the people who made it more complicated to feel better about themselves. And I don't want any part of that. So that's why I've created this podcast, the Personal Development Unplugged Podcast. And it's to break down these complicated ways And I want to produce and develop powerful, new, yet simple ways. Remember, in simplicity, there's genius. And breaking down these processes, I'll be using hypnosis, NLP, timeline therapy, so many other things. And I'm doing it for one reason only. So you and me can become, if you choose to come on this adventure with me, to become the real you. The real you. Sing from your real voice. To show up. Be authentic all the stuff people talk about but don't tell you how to do it i want to break down those personal barriers your personal barriers i don't want to fix the things that didn't work because the thing is they didn't bloody work and it's about finding better ways and not using painful ways of the old sorts of ways people used to use but creating pleasurable ways passionate ways to create real opportunities to let your dreams come true you know, get learning and developing new skills that make it happen. And the aim of this is not to create the old you, but for you to be fully the real you. So if that feels good, come and join me on this unplugged adventure. Warning, 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 warning. You are entering into the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. Clough. Too late. Personal Development Unplugged. Hey, how are you doing? How are you doing? Now, this podcast follows on a little bit from the podcast we did about your armor. What's your armor? That was number 87. And you may, well, you will, you may need to use old Jenny Journal to make some notes. Make some notes on what I'm going to talk about. And then obviously we're going to use Jenny Journal to explore because that's one of the things you can what can you learn when you start to just stop and explore things and explore things about yourself because you know you can actually change anything you just have to just really be honest with yourself and we'll go into that in a minute and we've talked about that before but you see and as i say as i and i've said before nothing changes in your world if you don't change first. And this is all about recognizing the things that need to change. You see, I was listening to this uh, this person called Terry Crews, and they said, courage begets courage. I don't know whether, how many people use the word begets as opposed to a sandwich roll, but as a baguette. But anyway, courage begets courage. And then that brought me a memory of the FMQ we did about being honest. You know, you can't lie to yourself. You're the only person you can't lie to. You can try, but damn, it just doesn't work anymore because you know it, you know it truly. And the thing is, if this thing called courage begets courage, which seems to ring a bell, it resonated with me. You know, it began to bring a few memories back, all the things that, you know, I wanted to do. And it even made me think of, all the things I want to talk about today. 
you see, if this is true, then every emotion, every emotion that we stay in, will beget the same emotion. So if you're on this wonderful courage begets courage, because it's a way of getting away from fear, then fear begets fear. Isn't that so true? Because when we're in maybe a fearful state, we just tend to see the things in our mind. We imagine things of a fearful outcoming and what we're scared about, get those emotions even more deeper, more we just seem to have them everywhere. And then we start to see other areas in our life that we can be scared about. Yet, when we're in a happy state, everything just seems to be sunny, doesn't it? Everything just seems to be okay. We get what we want. Or even if we don't get what we want, we're just still happy. You know, we, we just feel that it's, every, well, it's okay. So then I began, I began, <laughs> I began, beget, began, what emotions are, am I begetting? And what emotions do you think you're experiencing and continuing to beget? That's a weird word, isn't it? But anyway, you know what we want. So I also got to think about, is this part of your armour? You know, are the emotions that you are, are feeling on a more consistent basis, certainly the negative ones, are they part of your armour? And we discussed that, I know. But only in brief on that five-minute quickie. But you see, I had to think about what type of emotions do I use that I don't enjoy, that I know aren't really working for me. So guess what? I got my Jenny journal out, because I do. I've got loads of them, as you know. And I started to think, you know, when things aren't going well for me, and this is like, this is my honesty bit, because I can't lie to me. I'm not going to lie to you. Where, what is one of my default systems or, or emotions and behaviours that I use that really doesn't work? And when I thought about it is, hey, Paul, you get really passive aggressive, you know. And I, and I didn't like to admit that to myself because, you know, I hate a passive aggressive in anybody else, which is probably why I see it in other people, because it's like this, the teacher's there, is waving its big red flag at me saying hey Paul this is what you don't like you better change but do I see it no nah, I just get passive aggressive you know and it makes me go aloof as if I don't care but the thing is I really do care and that's the lie that's also the conflict because I'm putting up this this barrier this passive aggressive barrier you know it's not a sulk it's a major thing a major major sulk sulk and I really do care. But it's like when that, this, you get involved in it, you, you start to live that part of passive aggressive and it seems to grow. And that's when you see all the things that are creating it in you and makes it even worse. So you start to see the negative side of, of the injustice to you and all that stuff. And everybody's against you. So you get even more passive aggressive. Well, I did. And I'm working on that. And you see, this came about a little bit even more. Because, oh, just to rewind a minute, you know, what does that passive aggressive do when I do really care, but I come across as I don't really care? Well, it pushes away the, the people I want to be with, you know, I want to share things with, but it just somehow doesn't let me and it pushes them away. So when they're pushed away, they don't want to hear it because I'm a bit of an ass. I'm not a bit, a big, a big one. But anyway. Here's another little secret. I've been having some one-to-one -one coaching. I'm not going to tell you what for, but it was new for me because I do one-to-one -one coaching, obviously, and to be on the, call it the receiving end or whatever, it was well outside my comfort zone because I haven't done this for ages. But it was brilliant. It was brilliant. But the weird thing was, what we started talking about, as usual, wasn't the subject because it never comes through the door. Remember that. And it was about, I can go very quiet. And even when I'm quiet, even, I don't know if you noticed in some of the other podcasts, my voice trails off into nothing. Like that. And that just like that. I did that deliberately, deliberately, by the way. And it trails off as if I'm not interested. You know, no small talk. And we were, it got me thinking that when I'm with people, I don't 
entertain small talk. And I seemed to just switch off. And I wondered, I wondered about that. Because when I'm with a group of people who I really want to be with, I seem to be so disinterested in it. But I'm not. But it's as if, well, this is what I came up with in my Jenny journal, is, you know, I don't want to expose myself. You know, we talk about, you know, being open and, and just vulnerable. That was what I was thinking of, this word and this term we use, being vulnerable. And I, well, I, I didn't. I'm getting better at it now because I'm talking to you about it. But I didn't like being vulnerable, as it were, without, without I don't know, without whatever. So I would really close down. And I thought to myself, I wonder why that is. And part of it came to mind was I didn't want to, you know, embarrass myself or be found wanting, be found out, that fear of, you know, being found out. And really, I thought to myself, well, I've got nothing to be found out about because I'm me. You know, I'm me who I am. I've got some various skills and I've got some things I need to improve upon, or loads of things I need to improve upon. And there's a lot of stuff I don't know. And I'm happy with the stuff I don't know because when I find it, and I, 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 I learn it. I've learned something, so I'm really good at that. But I look so disinterested when I just seem to back off, close down. And that's the last thing I really want to do because it's actually stopping me being part of that group. Because I've seen it in, in, in the past where I've been part of the group and slowly and surely I go to the edge. And as if I'm just an observer. And I'm not fully engaged and I'm not, not being engaged. You know, it's like to be interested or interesting, sorry, to be interesting, you have to be interested. And that's when people invite you in because you become interesting. But you see, what was the result of all of this? You know, I, at best, it was, um, I'm just dis distracted, bored, out of the way. But at worst, you know, I was really lonely. And that is exactly the opposite. So you've now got another conflict going on. This wonderful unconscious mind of mine, you know, my very best friend, keeping me from, you know, exposing myself and being embarrassed and all that stuff because I don't want to be lonely and I don't want to have that funny feeling of being embarrassed. Actually, it's excluding me from the very people that I want to be with. So I've got two wonderful things going on in my life that I'm going to change because... As I said, nothing changes in your world until you start changing yourself. And you can. You can change really quickly. So that's what I'm going to do. But I've got another little, like a little success story of this. Because it's this thing about courage begets courage. Because I don't want to look on the other way. Obviously, the positive brings on more positives. And it's about my son, Joe. Joseph. He's my younger son. And in the very early days, I think I've told you this before, he tells, tells people this, this um, story from his past where when he was very young at school, he was asked to stand up and answer a particular question, being told that, well, if you can't answer this, you'll never progress, you'll never get on. And he couldn't answer the question. So he closed down. He began just to be in himself. And he had this, I'm not good enough belief then. And things like that. And all the behaviours that went with, I'm not good enough. I don't know if you can relate to that. But the thing is, he changed. He, I've told you the story where he, he went to a, uh, his first hypnosis seminar. It's a week seminar to learn hypnosis, to try to find a new way in, in, in his career. And ended up loving hypnosis. And it got to the point where this very quiet, very introvert young man began working with clients at the age of 18 and getting remarkable results. Now, he had to have the courage of his, his love for doing this work to, to work with people far older than him who would look at him initially saying, you know, how can you help me? You're only 18. But when he displayed his skills and he was congruent, he got more and more courage, as it were. Now he speaks to 
hundreds, thousands of people. He's got millions of downloads where he speaks to people all the time. He is well respected. He's written a book. He's told everything. Now, each time I speak to him, he seems to grow. And it's not just in courage. It's in all the wonderful, positive emotions. And he works upon it. And that's what we do. Because as I said, nothing changes in your world until you change. And then it all changes. And it's those ripples of change that go far and wide. They go further than you can ever think. And they just, well, they just go everywhere. And the one great thing about it is everyone around you, the people who love you, well, they get to be around you when you're feeling so positive, so good. They get to feel that energy, those ripples, bang, straight on. And that creates a change in them too. So you now become the change you want to see in others without knowing it. So, you know, this is where we start to to think about maybe how we're not getting our dreams and how we can change that. Because I want you to get your dreams. I keep saying this. I want to encourage you to dream more. But dream and then take action. So, as you see, if a dream is not actioned upon, it becomes a wish. And wishes tend to just float away. They become the thing that in years' time you go, I wish I'd done that. Because if I'd have done it then, I'd have been doing so much more. Well, now you can because you're going to change that wish into a dream and take massive intuitive action when you start doing all this work. And, you know, maybe you can say to yourself, well, in the past, you know, I've had these wishes and they haven't really worked. And I've read a few books, didn't really work. I've listened to to podcasts. I even listened to yours, Paul, ages ago. And nothing seems to have changed, maybe. Well, that's right. But the thing is, It's maybe because you weren't setting the right intention. Maybe you just didn't have the the one little bit of learning that would change everything. You know, your experiences as at that particular date just weren't in the right amount or the right type to allow you to move forward. And now you can. Because this thing that we're doing now, this unplugged personal development little thing, you and I, we can actually do anything we like. And you know that now. So, you know, you are going to be going outside your comfort zone. I'll tell you that now. And that can be quite scary, like me and my coaching. But the thing is, it's as I even had this thing, it's my comfort zone. And then I had to think about what I've been talking about. And what I've been talking about is it's not a comfort zone. It's a familiar zone. This is what I'm familiar with. And when I go past this familiar zone, yeah, I'm in the unfamiliar. And it's bloody good. There's so many wonderful things out there. And until you go through that self-imposed imaginary barrier that isn't there, and you go, was that it? Is that all there was? Man, I'm going to learn so much. So that's what I want you to do. So where do we go from here? Here's a little bit of the how-to. Well, you see... You can explore these things in your mind, and that's okay. But I find when I just explore things in my mind, they tend to disappear because I have a good thought, and then I have another good thought, and that first good thought seems to just disappear for a little while, and I sometimes forget about it, or it comes up at another time when I'm not quite ready for it. So it's good to write things down. So, Jenny Journal. Explore. What emotions and behaviours, and we're talking about the negative ones to start off with, do I use? Because you do use them. They are just behaviours. And we can change any behaviour at any time. But we need to explore them first. So let's explore, like I did, about, you know, that what's the emotion or the, the behaviour I dislike in myself. That was my passive-aggressive. So we write that down. We get to think about times in our life when we did that. And we can start to think, okay, I wonder what the intention was. What was my unconscious mind? What was that behavior? What was that emotion trying to do for me? Now, I think if if you want a little bit of hypnosis for this, I've got, got one, I think it's number hashtag 87, where 
It's really about exploring your intention with your unconscious mind. So you could think about it, write it down, and then maybe just listen to that hypnosis track. You know where it is. For those of you who aren't there yet, and there's more people coming every day, it's paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast. Yeah, put your email in. I tell you every time. It doesn't go anywhere other than to remind you of the next one. Hey. So start thinking about, you know, what is this thing trying to do for you? What is a positive uh, intention? And then it's when you do that and you notice that conflict between intention and that negative behavior or that negative emotion will allow you to think, hey, I love that intention. How can I use and how can I get a different way? And I've even got one of those because that was my next point. You ask, how can I get this intention a better way? So you can explore what, you know, consciously in Jenny Journal, what type of emotions or behaviors would work better. Here's a clue. Say you were frightened of heights. And most people who are frightened of heights only use fear as their emotion. They use panic. The behavior they use is panic attacks and constantly worrying and thinking and thinking and worrying and showing pictures of stuff in their head that will never happen probably. Well, it won't happen because you're so bloody frightened you're not going to go near a curb, let alone anything higher than two foot. But think of different things. You know, calm, observant, two lovely ways, you know, being aware, having awareness of your surroundings, having safety, a time when you felt completely safe. So you could look calmly and peacefully at a situation and make a considered proper decision to be safe. Now, there's some wonderful new ways. And when you do it consciously, you're starting to tell your unconscious mind, this is the type of things I could do. Now, what you can do, because I did it in, um, I think it was number 86, flooding the right way. I think that was 86. So the two of them, 86 and 80 floor. 80 floor? <laughs> 84. And they've both got hypnosis tracks on that same place where you can start to explore different ways without actually having to do the thing itself in real life. So you get your unconscious mind and your Jenny journal, your conscious imagination to start coming up with alternatives. Better, healthy, self-esteemed type of new ways which will make you feel good and keep the intention and allows you to practice this in your mind because what does practice make it doesn't make perfect it makes permanent so the more you practice being differently better and getting better results and better results it's like your unconscious mind goes well i know what to do now i could always have that fear stuff about being you know frightened of heights but i've got so many better ways anyway so why would i ever choose that so got so much to do. You see, this thing about practice making permanent, there is a, a metaphor, a metaphor we use in a lot of our trainings about, you know, when you go down your garden path, not the, not the, the path which is um, nicely paved and things like that, but when you just walk down a path, you make a path, don't you, you know, through the grass and it becomes, first of all, you start walking and some of the grass starts parting and then the more you walk, you can actually start to see where the grass starts to disappear and that path develops. And you keep going over that path over and over again. And that makes it permanent until you change. So you can now make a different path here. You can go to the right and make the right path. Ha, <laughs> there you go, isn't that great? But go, go down the right path. And yeah, the first time, it's a little difficult. It's a bit clunky, a bit conscious, but then you go down that path again. And as you go down that path, and this is what this hypnosis does about finding these new behaviors, gets you to repeat them. So the more you repeat them in your imagination, it's like those synaptic gaps start firing elsewhere and creating new neurological pathways, which means then the old path starts to grow back again or grow back again, the grass begins to grow back again and the old path disappears and you begin on the new path. And that new path can be many, not just one to the right, it could be hundreds of right paths. Being ready to choose 
the most appropriate path for you. Hey, that was a good metaphor, wasn't it? <laughs> That's what I'm doing anyway. You know, on my coaching and what I'm thinking about this passive aggressive, how can I stop myself? How could I be better? How could I show myself, be more authentic? And I hate the word authentic, but your, your authentic self, your um, aligned self, and show it knowing that you're going to be safe. You know, trusting. Because I was working with one person, uh, this is an aside now, working with a client just the other day, and one of their learnings they, they came up with about they didn't trust this particular person. And we looked at that and thought, well, is that really a learning? Not trusting one particular person. But the learning, when we turn it on its head, was to trust ourselves. Because when we trust ourselves, we can make the right decision. And that's the way. So that's like the takeaway from this. And I know this podcast is going on a little bit longer, but I've, I just feel it's the right thing to do. You can do anything you like, as long as you know what you don't like and what, and what you want instead. And what we don't do is throw away the intention. When you honour your intention, so you say to your unconscious mind, look, I understand you're trying to do the best for me. I want you to do the best for me. I thank you for doing the best for, you know, the best we could do through all these years. But now it's time to change, to continue doing your best for me, to continue with this intention, but to find the most wonderful new set of behaviours, beliefs, um, emotions that make this even better than the old way. And when you think like that, bam, your imagination and creativity start to come to the fore. You begin to think of new ways consciously. You think of, you know, just start to thinking of emotions and setting your state. That's another one we've got. And I think that's 86. When you set, set your state, then you can, you, you're feeling the feelings you want to feel and you're telling your unconscious mind, this is how I want to be. And your unconscious mind goes, damn. If only I'd known that. So now I'll keep the intention and find that type of state or even better states to be in. Wow. And you see, one of the things I've, I've started reading is, you know, this thing about nothing changes in your world if you don't change. Well, when you change, because you're going to carry on, and this is the part, carry on until, and there's, and the until is dot, 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 because you're going to continue to want to evolve into the real you. Allow that real you to be who you really are. And then, you know, share it with others. And that's what I'd love you to do with this podcast. You know, I say at the end, and I will say again after this um, this podcast, please do share. Please do share it with everyone. Because, you know, even if they're not interested in this subject, it will come back. It will... Be there for them. This knowledge will will just be there and go, it will help them. And they'll see you as well being the change you want to see in others. And they'll go, you are my shining example. They won't say it out loud to you, probably, but they will think that or they'll just feel it. And that's a wonderful thing. That's why I do, I work one-to-one -one. because when I work with people, I feel great. I don't feel big ego. Oh, look what I did. I feel so great that I was in the room at the time of that change. I was part of that change. I didn't do the change because my clients do all the change work they, they have to do for themselves. But I was part of the process. And that's to me, is a wonderful feeling. You know, no one else knows about it apart from them and me. And then everyone else who sees them, they get to see the change. They don't necessarily need to see about me. But anyway, please share it. And, you know, if things get too much for you, Here's just the last aside. You know, do see somebody. One-to-one -one hypnotherapy, I think, is brilliant. You know, there's always Skype and things like that. I, I do quite a lot of Skype work now with people, and that's not an advert. But, you know, who knows? You, never, you might want to work with me. The other thing is, you know, I've got, and this is my little bit of, uh, uh, I suppose it's an advert or it's my sponsor. We've got Paul Clough online. Dot com. Now, okay, you've got the forward slash podcast, which is all the free hypnosis. Hypnosis, is, 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 is. there's over 20, I think it's 22 at the moment, and I'm going to add to them virtually every couple of weeks. 
But on there you've also got your Supreme Inner Confidence course, your Free Your Life of Anxiety course, and there's two paid for hypnosis um, courses uh, or, or things. Uh, you have a look, have a look. You know, the Free Your Life for Anxiety course, the first five days, these, the first five days are absolutely free. Man, and, and a lot of people will actually get their result in those five days. And then if you want to carry on and do some more work with me, well, there, there, there's the next part of it. But there's also money-back guarantees. So you've got nothing to lose on any of that. And that's what helps sponsor this show, this ep- this thing. Me, my will, my love for helping change the world. And you, and you. So please enjoy every heartbeat. If you want to send me... Um, your best, they call it the takeaway from this uh, episode, please do email me, paul at paulclough.co.uk. I'm on Twitter, P. Cluffy. I think, do you have to put at P. Cluffy? I don't know, but it's P. Cluffy anyway. You'll find it on there. And yeah, just have more fun than you can stand. Enjoy every heartbeat and make the ripples of your ripples of change go bigger and wider through just being you. Share and let's share all our learnings with everybody. We have a field, the integrated field of learning. It's free, because you get it back more, 10 times more, the more you put in. It's like abundance, the more you take from abundance, the bloody stuff keeps growing. It doubles, every time you take a bit out, poof, it's doubled again. Magic, and magical. So, until next time, this is Paul saying goodbye, and good mental health, no, and I look forward to speaking to you real soon. Okay. Enjoy your life. Bye-bye. Hey, shh. Just before you go, and don't tell anyone else, because you know you're my favourite. So this is just between you and I. There's loads to, to share on this podcast, but I only want you to share it to your best friends and everyone else. <laughs> yeah, because it would be lovely to share. And guess what? Please do email me. Email me anything, but email me any questions, anything you'd like me to discuss, any issues that you have that you would like me to just come up with a process for. You know, it'll be anonymous. I'll keep my name out of it. (laughs) And remember, if you want any hypnosis tracks, we can do something around that too, because they're all going to be at paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast. They're all free. And let's just make a massive library of them but it does help if you share this as well okay have more fun than you can stand and oh damn nearly forgot go to itunes and subscribe because that helps the ratings and leave a review if you would a nice one obviously well just your honest review and that really helps too just to help spread the word so just be the best you you can because i love you for it bye now personal Personal development. Personal development. Unplugged. 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 Unplugged.